Beta 3 of iOS 18 is here, and let's go ahead and take a look at it to see what is new. So here I have it installed on my iPhone 15 Pro, and right next to me is the iPhone 13 mini on developer beta 2, and this is on developer beta 3. And the most noticeable improvement can be the wallpaper that we have selected, as this is the new dynamic wallpaper. If I lock our device and go into the home page and go in customize, if we select wallpaper and we go to the iOS 18 one, this one over here, you can now toggle dynamic and dynamic will actually switch throughout the entire day and it automatically shifts like you're seeing like so. And if we add this wallpaper, I've used it already for a couple of hours. I actually do like it. But unlocking our device, another new change can be the icons as even third party icons now support the new dark mode. My fitness pal is one of them. If you click here, YouTube, Facebook, YouTube music, and so many more. Even got T-Mobile over here joining. So by long holding and tapping customize, go on customize, select light, all the icons are back to their normal shape. And if you select dark mode, that's how they look like. And it looks really good when you select light mode in the background with the dark mode apps. Now another new icon that got a surprise update was the map icon from Apple. Because on beta 2, this is how it used to look like. It definitely is richer in detail and in color in my opinion, and definitely does allow this app to stand out a lot compared to like third party map apps, like Google Maps as an example. I think that was the reason why Apple decided to do that update to make it stand out with its competitors. Now the flashlight animation has also been updated. By toggling the flashlight, this is how the new animation now looks like. Previously it had a slider over here and a slider on top. I really didn't like it, but now it's as easy as just simply operating it one-handed. And these are the new animations how it looks like. Now this flashlight animation will only become available for iPhones with a dynamic island. As you see right here, it really does utilize the dynamic island. Because this iPhone has the notch, unfortunately, and we toggle flash, it doesn't do none of that. I have to repeat the process to disable flash. So only iPhones with a dynamic island are going to be receiving this. And then if we go ahead and text somebody in messages, if you select the emoji, your stickers are now combined with your recently used emojis. And if you select your stickers, notice how they stack up like photos do, or not photos, emojis, I'm sorry. In addition to that, if we do go through our emoji section, Emojis are much larger than ever before, making it easier to browse and select the correct emoji in case you're having a hard time locating one. Yes, you can use the search, but to my, from my experience, it's not really that easy using the search because most of the time when I'm searching up for an emoji up here, it still ends up to be the incorrect one. So this is how it used to look like previously. Yes, you could fit more emojis in a single row, but now they're much easier to actually view and see. And your stickers and as well as your Memoji are also categorized over here in your own little section. And then CarPlay, if you go to accessibility now, verbally control your CarPlay without you having to press on the screen or select any button in your vehicle. So if I enable this and say open music, it's more responsive. And But now I can also say press back tab. And I could go back. Or if I like to go into my playlist, I could say tap playlist and let Siri tap on it on your behalf. That works really well. Another amazing change that's coming soon is the ability to record while playing music if you're using your phone for CarPlay. That's right, you can actually record while media is playing with CarPlay at the same time because if you go into your iPhone settings and go into camera and recording sound, there's now a new allow audio playback. And by enabling this, if you read the description, it says audio playback will not pause when recording a video. And then another minor changes can be located in control center because your icons are bigger than previously how it used to look like on beta two. That's one thing I noticed here. And if you hit the record, when the three second timer is over, it now says recording instead of previously, it would just say on. But disabling this, other new changes can be located by long holding your, basically your Wi-Fi settings and such, because on the very bottom, there's now a new satellite section where previously we didn't have access to that satellite view. But if you long hold, you can actually try the demo right there on your compatible iPhone where you could test out the satellites in your location to see how good your iPhone will perform in case of an emergency. 
But on the side here on some of these, you can see on these long hold icons, you now have a two arrow icon on, on the side showing you that you could tap on it to quickly select between Bluetooth settings, Wi-Fi settings, and etc. It's no longer like a hidden feature. Now it actually points it out that by pressing on it, it'll do something else. And then the Apple TV app now got an update as well. Whenever you're watching some of your favorite shows through this app, if we resume Ted Lasso as an example, there's insight support now. By tapping here, it will show you the cast members are playing in their acting roles right there with their real name. And it automatically updates throughout the entire scene automatically. And this also includes music that's playing in the background if you're trying to identify the song that they're playing in the background. You can just tap on Insight and it'll do it. And then still in the settings, I almost forgot to mention this, in the accessibility tab for eye tracking, it's been improved where eye tracking is more accurate than previously, but the setup procedure takes a little longer because it gathers more data now. So that's good to know that eye tracking has been improved. Then if you do need to do a mathematical question, like 600 divided by 24. It's 25. When Siri gives you the answer, there's now a new copy ability where you could copy that answer and paste it somewhere else. And then the fitness app also received a new update. If we launch the fitness app, we now have this new splash screen telling us there's more customization ability for summaries, flexible goals, training loads has been improved, and new customization abilities if you're subscribed to Apple Fitness Plus. In addition to that, my most favorite update is located in the podcast app, which should allow me to convert back to the official podcast app now from Apple. Because now, if you're listening to a podcast and you skip between a certain section and you just want to share this to your friend, now whenever you share this podcast and you hit shared episode, there's now a new start section, very similar to YouTube, where you can actually select if you wanted to start from the area where you're sharing it from. So if it's a funny section, a funny part from a podcast you're listening to, you want your friend to also have this laugh with you or learn something new, you can now start it from the exact time where you started sharing it. Shout out to the official boys, by the way. And lastly, new improvement that I strongly was asking for for like the longest time ever since I was 18 can be located in the Photos app. Because now, if you look closely, you can now select the photos automatically and delete them at once. Instead, instead of previously, that wasn't there, so I had a long hold and select them. But even that, I couldn't delete them. But now, we have the select tool. And then if you click on an image, the corners are now less round, if that makes sense. Before, they were super round and they just looked weird, but now they're kind of sharp. So they no longer have that annoying curvy edge. But other than that, there you guys have it. That is everything new for beta three on iOS 18 developer beta. The official release for this should be a release sometime during the fall. The official release of iOS 18 should be released alongside the official release of the new iPhone 16s. I'm saying official a lot. But as soon as those phones are out, typically within that week is when iOS 18 or Apple will release the full non-beta version of iOS 18 without any bugs and issues. And then for the public beta, journalists and reporters are all saying, journalists and reporters are the same thing. They're all saying that the public beta should be available sometime next week. And developer beta 4 should be released in the next two more weeks. As Apple has been consistent on a nice track record lately, releasing every beta update every two weeks for the developer beta. And the public beta should also be following a two week period until mid fall. But other than that, there you guys have it. That is everything new for beta three of iOS 18. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you'd like to watch more, check out this video over there where I highlight all the new changes that's coming out for your TV, for Apple TV OS 18. I cover everything right there. Thank you so much for watching.